let's uh, dive into it. And I'm glad that most people are uh, at least intermediate with SQL because this is going to be a little bit hard for people that, have, that are beginners with SQL. But it's a great start and it will make your life easier, hopefully. So anyway, uh, just a few words about myself. Uh, I'm a co-founder of Miracle in Iceland in 2003. Uh, Miracle uh, works in a, uh, actually uh, operates in a few countries, uh, mainly Denmark and the Nordic countries. And uh, Miracle is founded originally by ex-Oracle staff. And, uh, and Miracle stands for Microsoft and Oracle. That is the combination of those two. Uh, forms the name. Uh, I've been using relational databases since 1987. That's uh, it's a pretty long time when I was writing this episode. Is that really so? And the first uh, time I used it was, was with a database called RDB on, on VMS. And uh, that was a great database actually at the time. It had a few quirks. Uh, one of the strange things was that uh, commits were really, really slow but rollbacks were fast. So it was really good if you made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I've used Oracle since 1993 when I was working in the US and uh, SQL Server since 2003 when we founded Miracle. We decided to uh, uh, move over to uh, SQL Server as well and other databases. And uh, I probably use SQL Server for 95 to 99% of my work now. I hardly ever touch Oracle anymore. Um, I've been working in, uh, in BI more or less since 1997 with, uh, with um, yeah, BI data warehousing analytics. And I worked all over the place. I've uh, been on projects in, in, the US, in the US, in Europe, Africa, Middle East, and uh, done BI in all of them, except Africa, I guess. And I've been using windowing functions since um, 1999. I think that was Oracle 8i. And uh, it came into SQL Server in 2005. It wasn't great at the time, but it has improved a lot. And uh, as of version 2012, it's actually become pretty robust and, uh, and good. And there were a lot of good things before that time, don't get me wrong. But now, as of 2012, it really rocks in SQL Server. Uh, just to start, uh, there are three to four types of windowing functions. There are uh, uh, just, for, just for if there are people that are not SQL Server people, for example, Oracle calls windowing functions analytical functions. So uh, while SQL Server uh, calls some windowing functions and uh, Analytical functions are just a subset of uh, windowing functions. I like windowing functions better. Uh, and uh, there are three to four types of windowing functions. We have uh, aggregates. We can do a sum and average count, main, max, etc. There's probably uh, there's gonna, probably going to be more of those functions as time passes. Uh, for example, uh, in SQL Server 2017, we have an aggregate function called string aggregate and uh, that aggregates strings, but it's not it's not a windowing function yet. But um, I guess it guess is that it will be uh, ranking functions. We can rank things. We can uh, we can get them, give them a row number. We can put them into percent percentiles and rank them by percentage, say this, uh, this row is in top 10% or it's number 193 or, or it's in the third percentile. Or, and uh, then we have analytical functions that uh, give you uh, the first value of a set, the last value of the set, the lag, the lead, the cumulative distribution, etc. I will, not I will not cover all of the functions. We simply do not have time to do it, but I will give you examples that you can use uh, for most things uh, if you use all of the functions. Uh, I haven't used all of them myself. So uh, depending on what you do, if you're in data science, for example, you will use a lot of analytical ones. If you're just a regular data hack, you will do uh, 
a lot of aggregates, uh, ranking, et cetera. And the fourth, fourth case is um, uh, the next value for, I've actually never seen, seen it used and I've never used it, but I'll show you an example of how to use it. It's, uh, it's used only with sequences and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, just to uh, go over, this, there are only a couple of slides. There's only like two, three more slides, but then uh, it's all demos, so just uh, be patient. Uh, if I go over the general structure of, uh, of uh, a windowing function, it looks something like this. Uh, you have uh, a regular select statement, you have a select, and uh, you have a form class just as a regular statement, and then you have the name of the analytical function or, or the window function. And the first part is going to be uh, just the, uh, the name of the function, for example, row number, or sum, or rank, or first value. Uh, they're always going to have an over part. So if it doesn't have an over part, it's not an analytical function. And optionally, it's going to have a parameter inside the function. For example, here you have the last name, but here you have no parameter because you're just getting a row number. And then inside you have um, an order by clause optionally, and you have a partition clause also optionally. Both of these are optional. And we'll see how these work if I just flip over to my to my management studio here. And uh, I will explain this all in more detail. I'm just gonna run a statement here and uh, running off table called customer that has uh, regular customer info. It has a last name, first name, income, city, region, and uh, a few other uh, columns that we're not really interested in. And as you can see here, I'm getting the count of rows. This is the total count in, uh, in the query. It's going to give you the total count for each, each row here. It's going to give us a row number. And what's interesting here is that the row number, you can see here that there is an order by clause. I will cover this more better just shortly. Uh, the row number, uh, the row number has an order by clause, which gives us the order of the row number clause. So you can see that you have a row number one, then you have a row number two just here. So it's obviously not using the same order by clause as is used at the bottom here. So even though it's the same order, it doesn't, it's not fulfilled necessarily by the same part of the query. Uh, what's important to know about these clauses is that you can only use uh, windowing functions in either a select or an order by clause. You cannot do a where clause. You cannot, you cannot use, say, for example, where row number equals three. That's, uh, that's not allowed. And the reason for that is that uh, conceptually, the, uh, the window functions are evaluated after the uh, where class has been applied. And it's also to, uh, to prevent us from having ambiguous results. For example, adding the result, adding the uh, condition here, that would say row number equals three, what would that really give us? It wouldn't give us this row because uh, uh, the row number would all, all already be applied. So <laughs> there, there wouldn't really be any way for the optimizer to find out what you're actually asking for. So that's why you cannot use it 
in wear classes. Uh, just to show you an example of a similar query uh, using the same syntax, it will run like this. This could be written in many, many different ways, but this is roughly giving you the same, same result. And if I look at the um, messages and, uh, and the query performance of this, I can see that for the top, for the analytical ones, one, I'm getting 37,000 logical reads. That's uh, 36,000 plus uh, 300 here. And for the uh, for the conventional one, I'm getting uh, 67,000, 68,000, something like that. This is it's not necessarily true all the time. Actually, in most cases, uh, you might be getting better performance for uh, the aggregate functions using, using, for example, cross apply or or uh, or a subquery. Hey, Benny, I'm just going to um, quickly interject here. Uh, is there any way you can zoom in? Uh, because uh, a lot of people can't really see what the code, uh, you know, your code here. Yeah, is that better? Yeah, that's a Only lot this? better. Okay, I can I can do that. Yeah, I'll, perfect. Uh, Thank you. Okay, no problem. Uh, so uh, we see that we are we are getting uh, uh, better performance out of the uh, upper query, even though it contains the row number function, which is not included, or the, num the row number functionality, which is not included in the in the bottom query. And, uh, and in many cases, this is going to be the case. You will, uh, you will get better performance, but as in everything, everything you do always, the answer is always going to be, it depends. You will get, you will have to test and test and test. And uh, for simple queries, you may be better off skipping the analytical functions, the windowing functions. Sorry if I say analytical functions all the time. It's just uh, it's just a habit. When I say analytical functions, I'm referring to uh, windowing functions in general. Uh, going back to uh, my slides here and moving over to the next one, I'm just going to go through in more detail the uh, the overclass and what the individual parts of it mean. Uh, first of all, we have the partition by class. This is analogous to the regular group by, and it defines the window that we are working with. It defines the base of the window. So whatever we do in that function is going to be restricted at the bottom and the top of the partition class. So we say partition by city, no calculation, or nothing. All the results, all the rows that we're dealing with are going to be in the same city. Uh, so when I say can often be read as for each, if you say partition by cities, city, you can say for each city calculate the sum. So it's uh, convenient to use for each in that sense. I, I do it sometimes. Uh, then you have the order by. The order by decides the sorting and in some cases will change the functionality. Some, uh, some functions will lead an order by. For example, you cannot have a row number without an order by. You cannot have a rank without an order by. Uh, and uh, you cannot have a lag or a lead. You cannot know the, the leading function, the leading row or the trailing row of, of, of the current row without actually knowing the order that you're supposed to look by. And, uh, and in some cases, the order by, if you add an order by, you will get a different function. And the example I use here is a sum. So if you do a sum with an order by, which kind of makes no sense, but if you do a sum with an order by, it will do a cumulative sum. Uh, last but not least is the uh, rows between or the range between uh, class. There is, a, there, is a, there is a difference between the two. You can, 
when you're dealing with your window, you define the base window with the partition class. You say, I'm just dealing with the city. But you can also further refine find the window. For example, just take the last two rows, or I'm going to take the last three and peek ahead two rows. And, uh, and there is also uh, not only rows between, but also a range between. And the range between is the default. And uh, that is this, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, that is this one here, the rows between unbounded preceding and current row. This means that the window you're dealing with is always from the beginning of your partition clause up until the current row. That is, if you have not changed, if you don't have a rows between or range between clause, this is going to be your default window from the first record up until the current row. Uh, for example, rows between one preceding and one following, it's going to go one row back, the current row, and one row forward. So that's going to be three rows in total. There are shortcuts for this. You can say rows five preceding, that's going to be six rows, just so you be sure about it. It's going to count the current row always by default. The difference between rows between and range between is um, rows is a physical uh, it's it's a physical range. It's three rows back or whatever. While range is a value. I'm gonna I want to go from uh, and um, it's it's best explained by a by an example. And I'm gonna jump into that right now. So uh, let's go to my second query here. And I'm gonna try to explain the uh, partition by class. So, in this uh, query, we're uh, just going to select from a customer table. We're going to join it with a calendar table on some date. And we're restricting ourselves to a, one region and one city, just to, uh, just to be able to see what we're doing. And, and we also have an order by order by class, and we can see that in the order by, we have uh, we had a, uh, uh, a window function. So we can use those in order bys. And you could also do it by name. You can, instead of saying this here, you could tell, go and say, just, uh, I want to order by Benny, percentage. can you zoom in again so we can see yes, a little better? Yes, sorry, sorry, okay. I forgot. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I've been told, I'm being told off here, I forget to Zoom. So uh, we see here that uh, I'm doing an average and I'm partitioning by calendar year and city. And I'm calling it my city average. So that's going to be, I'm, calling, uh, I'm not running the right query here. Let me just run this. And well, it's uh, yeah. Piece of tea off. I will. I will zoom in. Just uh, let me just get rid of this. Doesn't matter. And I'll zoom in. And um, we can see here that I'm doing the the average, and I'm partitioning by the calendar year and the custom city. I'm also doing. A yearly income divided by this row, this uh, column up here. I'm doing the average per city per year, so that this is going to be my city average is going to be fifty-five thousand. You can see it here, fifty-five thousand. It's going to be this. It's going to be repeated until we get another city or, or another year. In this case, we always have the same city, but here we get another year so we have 66,000 here and we get 2016 and then 2018 and each time it will calculate a different average so we have in effect 
run a, uh, a query. This could be a sum or an average or a count or, or whatever. And uh, we are mixing regular detailed data with uh, what would in general be an aggregate function with a group by. Uh, these, uh, these expressions quickly become a little complex. Like, you know, you put a format around, you, you want to find how much is my income off the average. So I take my income, in this case 30,000, divide it by 55,000 and get it's 54% of the income. Then you get something with this syntax. And uh, these can get pretty big quickly. Uh, I have another example here, which is the entile function. The entile will split, split your result set up, up, into, up into percentiles, so that in this case, I'm gonna get four percentiles. That is a quartile. And you can see that this is the bottom, uh, the bottom first, this is the second, this is this is one to one to twenty-five percent or zero to twenty-five, this is twenty-five to fifty. And uh, I should be getting uh should keep doing this again, I guess. Just having problems here like that. So you can see the quartal building up until we're up in the fourth fourth quartile here. And uh, you could you could have this in ten percent, or if you would if you would have ten parts here, it would be in uh, in tenths. And also, uh, you can have. Uh, I also have the rank in which order is this? Is the first place, second place, third place, fourth place? And in this case, the rank is also partitioned by the calendar year and customer city. So the rank is gonna be reset each time we change a year, like here, like here, and like here. And each rank, if it's the same rank, if it's the same number, like in this case, the yearly income is 30,000, it's gonna get the same rank. We get 40,000 here, so that's gonna be second place and then third place. There is another function called rank, not dense rank, and I can show you how that works by just uh, let me just uh, run this really quickly and um, zoom in again. And uh, well, I forgot to rename it, and you can see here that uh, a regular rank. We go from one, one, and then to three. It doesn't put in put in position number two because number two is really all, is really already filled. So you have the rank is one and two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that's the difference between a rank and a dense rank. So that's how you partition. You uh, you can partition more or less anything, and. Uh, it will restart your calculation. In this case, it restarts our ranking, it restarts our row number, it restarts our sum or averages or whatever we're doing. Uh, I sometimes use this syntax. I'm gonna run this here. I sometimes use this syntax when I'm when I'm writing these because uh, it makes things easier to write. So I have the, uh, the functions up here, and then I refer to them by name, and down here I could also use them in work conditions. I could say, I could select only where quartal equals one, or, or my contribution is uh, less than 0 0.5, or, or something like that. Uh, th there's a performance penalty towards to, to if you, if you use this, but uh, sometimes you're doing something ad hoc or you're playing around and uh, you're just, uh, or you're running on a small data set, then it's uh, definitely gonna be worth doing. Uh, let's go back here. And uh, 
So um, I'm going to do the order by class to show you a few samples of that. And that's going to be the order class three, which is here. And uh, order by is uh, is pretty obvious when you're doing ranking or, or row number or, or something like that. But when you use it on aggregates, like here, you just say sum yearly income over, there is no partition, there is just order by yearly income. All right, let me actually back up a bit. Let me take this one first. If I do a yearly income sum, and I just do a partition by city, then I will get the sum for each city. If I do the same thing, sum of the yearly income, partitioned by city, but order by yearly income, I will get a moving total. And let me just show you how this uh, looks when I, when I run this. Oops, wrong database. And uh, zoom in again. You will see, for example, that uh, this is these are my regular rows, the last name city, the yearly income. Uh, on the quartile, just to have it there, the rank. And the rank is going to restart at each city by the partition cost, and it's going to be order by yearly income. So the one, so the person with the lowest income is going to have rank number, is going to have the lowest rank. So. This one with 10,000 is going to have rank number one, 20,000 is rank number two, 30,000 are going to all have the same rank, etc. I do the sum of the yearly income, partitioning by city, so that we just get the, uh, the total sum here. This is the total sum for the city of Bendigo. So if I scroll down here, you can see that I switch over to Brisbane. And then I get the total sum for Brisbane. Okay. So uh, that's just group by. Now, on the other hand, if I put order by yearly income, I will get a moving total. So a moving total is going to have an order by clause, and it's going to it's going to be ordering by the yearly income. So you can see that I'm ordering by yearly income here as well, just so that I can get it in the same order. It doesn't have to be in the same order, but just so we can see it and read it. So you can see that the first value is 10,000, so the moving total is 10,000. You add to that 20,000, and that becomes 30,000. It becomes interesting when you get the same value, 30,000, three times in a row, and here we get 120,000. So it adds all of those three to those three rows because it doesn't it doesn't do the uh, sum the order by by rows it does it by range it does it by the range of values that's what it does that's the difference between the order by range which is the default and uh, the order by rows so I'm gonna do uh, uh, here is a is a yearly income as uh, some arranged totals, and here it's uh, it's going to do the same, but it's just the whole thing. It's from the beginning. It's all the cities, so you're going to have you're going to mix it together. We have uh, we have this one doing by the partition, and this one is just taking the whole set. That is the whole Australia in here, and. Uh, Last, we have the sum yearly income, and we say order by yearly income, rows to preceding, meaning that for each city, it's just going to take the last two rows if it hasn't. So we're going to have uh, 60,000, uh, uh, we're going to have to partition by city, order by two, yeah, up until the current one. So we're going to have 30,000 plus 20,000 plus. 10,000 is 60,000, 80,000 is 30, 30, 20, and 90,000 is 30, 30, 30. 
But we're doing this by rows, meaning that it doesn't handle this as the same, same route. You cannot use the range. Actually, let me go back here to uh, the slide. Is that uh, rows between unbound, unbound preceding and current row is a default. Actually, it should read here range between unbounded preceding and current row. That's, that's an error. And this is the only only place where you can use range. So you actually never use it because it's it's uh, it's implied always. So I never actually type it out. And this is the only way you can use it. You cannot use it with any. You cannot use it with uh, uh, with any. You cannot say range is uh, six months back or anything like that. You will have to. You have to go around that. This is uh, yeah, in Oracle, for example, you have an interval data type, and there you can do a range uh, two months back, or you know, it checks the values. And uh, it is my guess that, uh, without knowing it, it is my guess that SQL Server will, will implement that since it has the syntax for it already. It's just, just it's just not used. Uh, so. Uh, if I would, for example, just uh, change this query here, and it's going to be, I'm going to skip the uh, skip the uh, partition, and I'm just going to say uh, rows, not range, which is the default between unbounded. Um, Unbounded, preceding, and current row, which is the same as this one, which is default, except that this one really reads range between unbounded, preceding. And we look at how how this. Um, I will I will uh, zoom in. Just uh, oops, where is that? Oh, I just selected something wrong here. So let me zoom in. And uh, the difference is going to be that uh, the range total, uh, it's a bad, bad example actually. Let me actually partition by the city here so we see it. It. And I'm gonna so just so that we have the city of Bendigo. So we have the range total. It goes from 10 to 30 to 120 here for the three lines we saw before. But the rows does it by row, so it will increase by 30 each time. This is the difference between row and range. Okay. Um, uh, let's move over to uh, uh, to another example. Uh, you can do aggregates on top of uh, on top of um, uh, analytical functions. For example, you can do you can do this. You can do a sum of a sum. But then you will have to do a group by, which is going to have to include all the columns that you used in a, use in a partition by or an order by. So that anything you refer within the, in the over clause is going to have to be in the, in the year month, no, in the, uh, in the group by class. So uh, let's see here. So what am I doing here? I'm just building something that you might might want to do if you want to restrict yourself to. Uh, I'm building a list of accumulated sum, and I'm including all the dates in uh, in that. I want to have all the dates, even if there aren't dates. There is no value for the for uh, in uh, December 2014, but I still have an accumulated value. So that's what I'm doing here with this uh, clause here. 
I could do it the exact same way without using a width class by using the bottom one here. This is the same. It's still using an order by here. And this is how you could do uh, uh, something like this. Uh, if you want to build uh, build a list of data that that is not that doesn't exist. Uh, now I need my. Uh, I also want to run a little bit over uh, a few things that I uh, that are catch use in in um, in. Um, in windowing functions or, or uh, analytical functions. And that's uh, a classic one, is the last value. Uh, last value is an analytical function, just as uh, lead and lag and all of those. And that will give you the last value in a set. For example, uh, uh, you uh, are, are, are tracking uh, deposits in a bank account. And each day you see, uh, the value or the the, uh, the balance increasing or decreasing, mostly decreasing in my case actually, and uh, but you're only interested in the last value, the last value of of the month, what's there. So that's that would be that would be for example somewhere where you could do it, you could partition by month, and then retrieve the last value. Now there is a gotcha in this, and let's so um, let's see how this. Uh, Runs. So let me actually go back to uh, my slide here. Since I have uh, since I have a slide just on the last value, and uh, this is a function that will show you the last value. And what gets you here is that the default window, as we spoke about, the default window is always from the beginning of your partition up until the current row. Never forget this. Therefore, the default value for the last value is the current value because that's the end of your window. The current value, the current row is the end of your window and that's going to be the last value. So the first time you use this, everybody falls into this trap. They will think something is wrong with the last value. The first value is no problem. Find the first day of the month, it's going to be the first, you know, it's going to be the first, no problem. But the last value is moving. So Usually, when you're right, using the last value, you will, for example, this will take the last birth date of, uh, of the person with the uh, lowest income, I guess. <laughs> and it's going to be, it's going to consider the whole data set from the first until the last value of your partition clause. There is no partition clause, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to just take the whole table. So let's take an example. And uh, we can take a look at it here. We can see that we have, let me just run this and uh, zoom in. And we can see, for example, that here we are taking, uh, we have a birth date of a, of a person and and this is not doesn't have any rows between unbounded proceeding so it's always going to be the current value just what i was talking about it's going to partition by region city order by birth date so so it's uh it's going to be this birthday equal to current value we're taking the last birthday and the last birthday of this row is this row the last birthday of this row is this row I mean, it's it's the same row, so uh, that's uh, you never use it like that. Now, if I do last value, I do the partition and order by birthday, rows between unbounded preceding and unbounded following. I will get the youngest person because we're getting the last value, uh, uh, the last the last birth date, which gives us the youngest person. Uh, and um, and we're getting the birth date that we're ordering by birth date. So here we're getting the last value of we are getting the salary of the youngest one. 
because we're getting the last value ordered by birth date. So birth date is gonna define the last value. It's gonna find the row with the last value. It's gonna be somewhere here. And it's gonna pick out the yearly income of that row. This would typically be two set queries or, or a cross apply or, or, or something like that. So it's, uh, it's uh, pretty powerful. Now, we also have a percent rank, which is, um, which is a rank giving you a percentage, saying that this is uh, in the 0%, this is uh, in the top 3.85%. And I actually, had to, I actually had to look this up because I couldn't get this to fit, but this is actually rank minus one divided by the rows minus one. So this is gonna be, this is the dense rank, so it's going to be rank minus one, which is going to give me one divided by 26 in this case, because there's 26, and that's going to give you 3.85. So that's what this means, actually. And uh, I'm not a I'm not a data scientist or anything, so I can't really tell you whether that is statistically correct or not. But that's how it works. I said it with a lot of those. Uh, I also want to show you because I mentioned in uh, one of my slides there that uh, we go back here. Um, now, sorry, I lost it. Yeah, the next value for this I've never seen, never used it, and but I can show you where it is. Perhaps somebody will use it or can use it. Just uh, create a sequence. And if you haven't used sequences before, this is just a construct that gives you always uh, the next value in a row, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. And you can set the increments uh, and start static value and uh, do whatever. Uh, let me just restart it. And uh, I can do something like this. So I can execute this and I will get one, two, three, four. And the next time I run this, I'm gonna, gonna get some other because the sequence will always increase, so we'll just keep increasing. And I'm going to restart it again. But uh, let's say I was using this instead of an identity column. But I want things to be inserted. I, I, I want the values to be inserted in order of last name. I could do that. I could. I could. I could have an insert in, on top here and say insert into customer select last name or something. And I would have this ordered by last name. So you can see it's no longer in the order one, two, three. It's in some, it's in order by last name. Okay, that was, uh, that was it. Uh, I just want to go over, um, uh, there's a lot to go over actually, but I just want to show you something that I use, uh, well, too often. And uh, that is, for example, when I need to delete uh, delete uh, duplicates. And what I've done here is that I've just uh, inserted into the customer. And you can see here that I have 36,000 rows in there, 18,000 keys. So I'm going to have, uh, so the customer duplicates is going to have, it's going to look like this. I'm just going to select from it. And I'm going to select the customer key and the row number, and I'm going to partition it by customer key. So I'll start renum renumbering each time I find a new customer key. The customer key was unique in the original table, but it's no longer unique because we, we duplicated it. So we should get a row of one, two, one, two, one, two. So if I execute this part uh, here, just sorry, I forgot to zoom in. I execute this part here. And this will give me the customer key and the number 1212 because I will start renumbering at each new customer key. So let me run this. And, and you will see that we have customer 1100 has row number 12121 and customer 1101 has 12, et cetera. And all we gotta do now is I want to delete the duplicates where row number row number equals two. 
So I run this and it deletes half of them. If I now do the counts, I will get the exact same numbers. Deleting ex records that are exactly alike has suddenly become no problem. Uh, another uh, common use is um, to find gaps in a sequence. Now, I'm just going to create uh, the table here. And uh, what I've done here is that I've created a table that just has columns with the values 1 to 1,000. And I'm going to delete every 10th row, just when uh, modulus 10 equals 0. And uh, if I look at it again, you will see that it's missing row number 10, and it's missing row number 20 and 30, etc. Now, how do I find those gaps? Uh, all, uh, let me just uh, zoom in again. So I got these uh, gaps in here. It's missing 10, it's missing 20, missing 30. So all I got to do is find what is the number after this one, and after this one, and after this one. Let me just, uh, sorry, it was uh, covering the covering my code there. So I find the, I, I select the row number one. I check the next row number, which is going to be two, and order by row number. So it's going to return me this one. And then I'm going to take the difference. I'm going to take the lead, which is two, and I'm going to subtract row number, which is one, as difference. So let's see how this works. Uh, I'm just first run this one here. And um, you can see the uh, you can see that uh, for row one, the next row number is two, and the difference is one. Up until we hit difference is two here. So to find the ones that have this problem, all I gotta find is where the difference is not one. That's it. And that's how you'd find uh, gaps in it. So let me just uh, uh, let me just um, show you uh, one more thing. Well, this one is not uh, uh, this one is not a, an, uh, uh, a window function, but a regular aggregate. And uh, I actually just discovered it. You know, I don't know how I missed it. I've been using some XML syntax, but up until uh, 2017, this didn't exist. So string aggregate. So you can aggregate a string to get all of those things. If any more of you missed this, then <laughs> I'm happy to show you this. But I, uh, as I say, I don't know how I missed it. But uh, anyway, uh, here is uh, uh, another. Uh, Example to find the median of a, of a set if I run this here and There is a median continuous and a median discrete and if we just uh, uh, We're just looking at one city here so that there is no everything a, a, applies to this So we look at this median It's uh, 15 rows. So the median should be um, uh, This guy I guess now It's uh, It's it's continuous. So it's uh, it's this one, I guess, then. And, and the median discrete, the median, it's probably not a good example, actually. Uh, but the difference is that the median discrete is always going to pick one of the values that are displayed, while the median is going to take the average of the, of the middle two, for example, and uh, divide it by two. So if, if, you have, if you have two values in the middle, let's say 10 and 20, it would return you the median of 15 but the median discrete will pick either 10 or 20. That's, uh, that's the difference. Uh, I'm kind of done with uh, going over with what I wanted to go over. Uh, there is a lot of functions. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, stuff in there, and I will not have time to go over all of it. But uh, if you have any specific questions, 
you know, please share. Yeah, Benny, we actually do have <clears throat> a uh, chat window here. And uh, so if you uh, have any questions for Benny, go ahead and uh, type in your question and I'll go ahead and and I'll uh, read them out to him so he can get those answered. Okay. I also, if anyone wants the uh, uh, these uh, these examples uh, sent or something, just drop me an email and I'll I'll send them to you. No problem. Okay, um, Benny, I do have some questions here. Um, okay. They're all coming in now. Uh, Sandra asks, uh, will these functions work for all versions of SQL? Uh, most, most of them, uh, with the aggregate functions, will work for uh, as of SQL Server 2005, but not with the order by clause. Most of this functionality is in by 2012, but uh, before that time, the order by clause is not, is not there for the aggregates but you will have row number. I mean, for me, row number is the one that I use the most, as, as strange as that you, sounds, because I, I'm always kind of ranking things, and uh, row number is just a ranking function. So uh, that one is going to be there, and the sums and the aggregates, how far, but not in SQL 2000, sorry. OK, uh, Dave asks, what version of SQL Server is the string ag function available? That's uh, 2017. Got it. Um, uh, here's another question from Trey. What is the difference between lag slash lead and last value? OK. Uh, the last value will always uh, pick the last value in the uh, in the set, but the lag and the lead can. If you just take lag, they work exactly the same. Actually, you can you can do lag and just say order by something descending or ascending, and you will get the same functionality as lead with ascending, descending. You know, it's, uh, it's the same. But then you can go back. I want to take look at two rows from here, and you can see this where you could uh, do this, for example. The example that I showed you before, where I had uh, the dates coming up, for example, listing all the dates and filling in the gaps, you could have a lag and lead on that and just look two dates back, for example, two months back or two, uh, 14 days or whatever to look at the value that was, uh, that was there at that time. But the last value will only, only want delivery one row. You cannot pick, you cannot pick which one you want. Does that answer the question? Yep, thanks for clarifying. Yep. Um, yep. All right, here's another question um, from Jyoti. Uh, what function would you refer to if you wanted to change the client number from five characters to six characters? Okay, that's, uh, that's not a, a windowing function. That's just uh, an alter, alter table. Uh, modify or alter column and you would uh, change it to uh, you basically would write alter column no alter table table name alter column column name or char six you know or or char six or or whatever you were using or n bar char or or n char whichever data type you're using that's um okay. that's not yeah um Looks like we can take a few more questions. Uh, Chris asks, uh, could you go over the sequence function again? Yeah, sure. Uh, no problem. Let me just stop. So uh, it's funny with the, uh, where did I have that? Yeah. It's funny that the uh, uh, sequence has, sequences are Oracle's way of uh, using identity. And when, uh, when uh, Oracle introduced identities at the same time than, uh, than SQL Server introduced sequences. So both databases now have both, uh, both uh, methods of uh, dealing with things. And uh, some are good for some things and others are good for other things. Uh, so this is a sequence. I can just create the sequence. 
and I can say, uh, let me just drop it again. And um, if I just say create sequence, so just like that without any parameters, and I will select the next value for the sequence, it's going to be minus nine something. I, I don't even know what number this is, something really big. So usually you want to do a start by, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to begin there. And if I select this five times, I will, uh, I will get this. And this will, this will increase every time this is used. So, and uh, if the uh, database goes down, you may have gaps in your sequence. It, when the database comes up again, there may be a gap in your sequence. Also, uh, sequences are not reused. That is, if I, uh, if I would, for example, use this for inserting data, then I would issue a rollback then uh, I would not get those sequence values back. It's just going to be the next one. So it's, uh, the behavior is a little bit different from, uh, it's not a regular, it's not like selecting from a table or anything like that. It's, uh, it's a special object and it's uh, just sits in memory. And uh, that's why you get the gaps because the database goes down, the value disappears from memory. And, uh, and uh, that's how you do it. But this here, uh, if you're referring to this, is that I'm selecting the next value from this sequence, but I'm going to do it in, uh, if I skip this here, let me just, uh, just skip this here. I hope you can see this. So I've skipped the, uh, what did I do now? Oh, sorry. Uh, So I've just selected the next value, and I, I, if you noticed, I, I ran this first five times here, so like it was already at value five, so it starts at six, and just runs. If I now would run this again, it's going to give me whatever, 20,000 or something, or, or, or 5, so it's going to give me 18,490 and 18,491, etc. Uh, if I... Um, on the other hand, to an, to an over order by last name, and I will get this in the order of of uh, of the last name. So if I were using this for inserting or something, I would insert in the order of last name, or, or uh, that that would be the assignment of the sequence numbers. I've uh, um, as I say, I've never used this actually, and uh, uh, I would recommend against actually relying on a, on a number that where you would, for example, need it to be in a specific order or or not having gaps or or something like that. I would I would recommend against it if you can avoid it. But uh, sometimes there's a need, I guess. Does that does, does that answer the question or cover what you wanted to see? Yeah, I think that uh, he actually answered yes in the panel here. Um, okay. So we're actually, uh, our hour is up, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up for you, Benny. If you could uh, put your um, info up there on the uh, screen again, in case anyone sure. wants to take notes. Um, I did have a couple of people ask me, uh, will the recording of the webinar be available later? Uh, yes, thank you for asking. We do get asked that for every single uh, session that we have. Um, and I do want to let you know that we record all of our sessions and everyone who has registered for the session will receive a follow up email that includes a link to that recording. Um, additionally, I do post the um, recording on our website, pragmaticworks.com, um, a couple hours after the end of this session. So you can check there as well. Um, so thank you so much, Benny, for joining us um, and sharing uh, all this valuable information. And thank you, everyone, for joining. And we look forward to seeing you all next Tuesday for another free training session. All right. Take okay. care, Benny. Thank you. Bye.